Faisal and the Emir Halid are two of the sons of King Ibn Saud of Saudi Arabia. On a recent trip to Great Britain, they spent an afternoon with the Canadian Corps where Lieutenant General Sansom showed them around. The Royal Party made an inspection of some of the modern weapons and vehicles in use by the Canadian Army. Long flowing robes look strangely out of place in a modern tank, but the princes know a good deal about the operation and fighting qualities of armored vehicles especially since before arriving in this country, they had made a tour of the United States and had visited training centers there. At the end of the day, a Canadian armored division put on a demonstration. as the Canadian Army had two more colorful visitors than these princes. When they return to their own country, they will be able to report that Canada and the Canadian Army has made no small contribution to final victory. Apparently remote from all the turmoil of war, a quiet stream tumbles musically on its way in the highlands of Scotland. Nothing disturbs the solitude of its banks save its own muted murmuring. As it flows, it turns an old watermill which, unchanged for almost a century, once ground wheat into flour for the local inhabitants. But today it has another use. Electric power is needed in the highlands, and the Canadian Forestry Corps has found a way to get it. By connecting a generator to the water wheel, there is now power for the buzz saws and conveyor belts. Electricity to supply power for speeding up the handling of timber. Power for repair work. Power for lighting. Power for radio sets. And the little stream which turns the age-old mill goes calmly on its way, flowing onwards to where it meets the sea. Another big troop ship loomed out of the fog recently and tied up at a British port. Once again, safely convoyed by the British and Canadian navies, a large number of reinforcements from Canada had arrived. among the new arrivals, come to swell the ever-growing overseas contingent of the Corps. Under the efficient management of movement control, the new arrivals were marched off the ship. After a rough passage, it felt good to get both feet planted on Mother Earth again. Meanwhile, cranes slung the freight down onto the docks, for not a foot of space in any ship bound for England is wasted. At the railway station, the men had their first look at English trains. Trains that seemed so tiny after the ones in Canada. Then they were on their way to reinforcement units to start their final training.
Canadian fighting strength in Italy has been increased by the arrival of new infantry and armored formations from Britain. The newcomers lined the rails of their ships as they drew into the busy port of Naples. Among them was Captain J.E.R. McDougall, O.C., Canadian Army Film and Photo Unit. Pipers heralded the nursing sisters in battle dress as they came ashore, anxious to be off to the camps to get to work. Greetings were exchanged with United States and British soldiers patrolling the docks. And then, to the skirl of the bagpipes, they marched through the streets of Naples. Representatives of all parts of Canada, keen and fit-looking, eager to take their places alongside the Canadian brothers. Then, together with troops tested in Sicily and Italy, they will form a corps under a Canadian command. United We Conquer is a phrase that has become a symbol of combined operations. by Allied leaders on the plan for the invasion of Europe, the Black Watch of Canada held a combined ops exercise to rehearse the part they might be called upon to play in the assault. An assault that will dwarf every Allied military effort of this war. The success of coastal assault depends to a large degree on air supremacy. Naval strength, too, is a vital factor but once the landing crafts hit the beaches, the real success of the operation depends on the army. Combined ops encourages the spirit of cooperation in all fighting men, united by the danger of their calling. For 10 days, the course lasted, and after being through the hazards of live bullets and scaling cliffs, they could tackle anything in the line of assault. Toggle ropes, developed by the commandos, were used for the construction of bridges, ladders, and slides. In place of regulation web, men wear assault vests, which are canvas jackets with pockets and pouches for equipment and ammunition. All over England and Scotland, hundreds of thousands of troops are studying this technique of invasion. And when the curtain rises on the master plan, it will find the Canadians applying the lessons learned in a long series of combined operations. Canadians with the Allied troops united to conquer. <laughs> <laughs>